Hi, let's continue the motor uh, series. Uh, in the two previous episodes of the motor series, back then it was not even supposed to be series, I uh, showed you how I A. failed to wind the motor and B. Uh, succeeded to wind uh, RC Outrunner motor. Mm <clears throat> I, 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 I don't think I am the one who might be interested in uh, motor winding. This is why now there will be two additional episodes, at least two additional episodes, uh, maybe three, we'll see, uh, in which I will explain in layman, layman's terms, this is how you spell it, okay, in layman's terms, uh, how to do it at home. With a really simple at least i hope uh, in a very simple way without those magical equations constant physics explanation nobody gives uh, about them um, today today is the first theoretical uh, episode of that series when i will show you how motor the outrunner motor this one or this one is constructed inside what I have here is an example of the typical uh, Outrunner brushless motor. You see, you know it. Three wires, bell with magnets, and a coil inside. Will this thing focus? Uh, no. Uh, when we open this thing up, uh, let me find a screwdriver. Thank you, Emax, for the screw, not the C clip. <coughs> And I'm sorry for my voice, but I'm sick for like last few, few weeks. And I will, uh, this uh, let let wait a second. I will find the proper tools for that. This is always uh, so hard to open. Maybe this like no. Okay, no. Let's let's do it in the proper way with the help of the frame. I'm not using this frame, but because it's so hard to catch. Catch it, I will just install this on a frame with just uh, two screws, nothing fancy, dirty, but working. Okay, yeah, that helped. What we have here is a stator of electric brushless outrunner motor there is oh sorry there is a lot of wire winded on the coils and this is important there are always in the motors we are using 12 coils not 10 not 14 but exactly 12 coils and on those 12 coils there are winded three different phases which then are connected into three wires leaving the motor. If we look at the bell and count the magnets, you will see that there is always 14 magnets. Not 12, not 16, but 14 magnets. The motors we are using in our hobby, the brushless outrunner motors, are called 12N14P or 12P14N. Okay, never mind. That means there are 12 coils with three phases and 14 magnets with 14 magnets. Uh, we will not discuss the bell today very much because this is not important. We will concentrate on the on the stator where the coils the wire is winded um, the type of the wire and the number of coils that manufacturer or we or whoever else was able to wind on each of the coils determines uh, the efficiency the rotation speed and the torque and uh, what else speed max power things like that so the ideal motor will have a lot of turns of very thick wire of course this is not so simple to uh, do a 
good widening using thick motors. Mm, that's why many manufacturers, instead of widening one single wire, they are using braid. This probably is a braided winding, so instead of one wire winded around 14, 5, 15 times per each coil, here we have probably two wires winded it parallel. Uh, that makes the that there, there is more copper in the in the coil. The motor is more efficient, has more power, but still the it's it's reasonably fast because, like I said before, the more turns of the wire you put on the coil, the slower the motor is. Here, because when we wind multiple wires in parallel, we count the number of total turns of the whole wire. So even if we wind two wires 14 times, this counts as 14 turns, not 28 turns or something like that. We have 12 coils and three phases. Uh, that means that each phase has to be distributed around uh, among uh, three coils. Uh, what else? It's important the direction of next turns inside of the coil because the direction of the turns, if we are winding the wire clockwise or counterclockwise, determines the uh, direction of the magnetic field. In a simplified uh, way, phase A, this, uh, this here in the red color, uh, we start with the coil 1 and we gonna wind the coil one in the count clockwise direction that means the next coil should be counterclockwise this is half of the phase one now we go to phase two and phase two begins at coil number three which will be counterclockwise and clockwise phase c will begin at coil 5 and it will be clockwise counterclockwise then we go back to phase a which will be counterclockwise clockwise again as you might expect phase b clockwise counterclockwise and back to phase c counterclockwise clockwise if you look carefully you will see that there is a pattern phases coils with different phases they are winded in the same direction while the coils that are in the same phase are always winded in opposite directions so we have counterclockwise clockwise sorry wrong clockwise counterclockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, and so on, and so on, and so on. The next, let's say, problem is how we are going to uh, connect the phase phases uh, between each other. Each phase should be winded using a single piece of wire, and inside of the one, one phase, it will be like that. Phase one begins Phase A begins here, then after being winded, we go here and wind it like that. From this place, we go here, wind it, go back, and here we have created the one complete phase for the second phase. We will begin winding here, wind this coil go back here wind it go here wind number nine here number ten and the next wire is finished phase c very similar process we go to the here wind wind from here here wind go back wind and leave simple uh, i hope so uh, if this is not simple enough please rewind and take a look one more time how those separate coils are winded and wh how wire travels between them three phases phase a 
bc that gives us in total six wires but motor on the outside has only three wires that means we should somehow connect those wires between each other to create a real running motors there are two the most popular well no there are two ways of connect uh, phases between uh, each other one is called y y why you see why 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 um why termination schema is not very widely used in rc hobby because it creates a slower rotating uh, motor and three phases phase a phase b phase c are connected like this with one central point and the point the, the, there is no wire leaving the central point wire number one wire number two and wire number three that's all this is how y works you will not see outrunner motors connected into y termination schema very much ever i don't think i ever used anything in a y termination the most popular is not b come on pavel it's delta delta by delta i mean triangle so we have wire number one wire number two wire number three and between them three phases a b c simple understandable i hope so the final problem is the how we should connect the wire among each other uh, the regular motor uh, outrunner has only three wires while on our diagram we have how many uh, we have six wires because for each phase we have two wires that gives us six um, once again pretty pretty simple let's begin with phase a input of phase a we should connect those two this is the wire number one that will be leaving our motor we connect those two wires and we are good second uh, we should connect the place where um, phase number one leaves this is this is here i hope you can see it i well, okay this is here with the beginning of the next phase so um, we have to go back from here to here so from here oh i hope this is really visible so we go back and this is wire number two and as a method of elimination we ha still have to connect this wire with this wire so we have wire number a b and c that is a simple theory uh, behind outrunner motors 12 coils 12 i cannot show 12 using one hand 12 coils 14 magnets three phases uh, coils winded in the direction of clockwise counterclockwise counterclockwise clockwise and so on and so on terminated in two possible uh, ways either this is y or delta in our case almost always it will be delta termination and as simple as that there is almost nothing else almost because like always uh, it's all about the details mm, i i really wanted to record the second part of this <clears throat> today but as you might hear my voice is not not perfectly well i'm i'm still kind of sick uh, so hopefully in the next few days i will record the next episode when probably probably i will show you how i'm winding with a real wire the the motor i already showed you the, the one that's do it yourself from bang good crap without any information how to do it uh, but i will wind it with the purpose of being as slowly rotating as possible that means i will use the thin wire and try to put many turns on uh, each coils 
the the rules are the same as winding for the um, for the different purposes to, to run faster with thicker wire uh, it's not important at all mm, the important thing is to in which direction wind each of the coils and how to terminate the coils between each other uh, until then take care bye